Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Welcome to my contribution to the collaboration station. Thanks very much there to Matt Lown in part one for delivering that core module. I am going to be today delivering a massive fuel reserve so that all of the collaborators following me have got loads of fuel to utilize if they need it. So the idea here is to dock the entire central core part here to the station and ditch the sections here with the nerve rocket motors. Of course, to get this thing to orbit, we need a massive, massive vessel. So I'm duplicating here a vessel I made months ago called the Super Lifter. This time though, instead of eight cores, I'm adding 16 cores. This thing is a massive beast. It has a thrust to weight of around 1.2. And the idea is to be able to reuse this thing, of course. You can see there the raw power of this thing and I must admit it's actually hard to get this thing off the launch pad without blowing the launch pad up, it's so huge. As the vessel gets up above 100 meters per second we're going to start our gravity turn here, slowly rolling this thing over as we launch up into the atmosphere. Due to the huge amount of atmospheric drag this vessel encounters we do need to launch quite high and do our gravity turn quite slowly. We have Marcus Kerman in the pilot seat. This little guy is my Kerbal clone for this series. He is obviously heading up to meet with Matt Kerman, who's currently in the module orbiting the moon. Now, if you haven't already checked out Matt Lowndes' episode, check that out now. This will all make a lot more sense if you've seen that episode first. There is a link at the end of this video to the full playlist, as well as a link to episode 3 by Mark Thrym. Just passing 1200 meters per second here now, we are out of the thickest part of the atmosphere. And now with our apoapsis above 70 kilometers, we'll cut the engines. And we're just going to drift on until we hit our apoapsis marker and we'll circularize. So we still need to burn around 900 meters per second to get into orbit. And that's going to leave us with slightly less than 10% of our fuel remaining. Now with that remaining fuel left, we should be able to make a power descent and land SpaceX style. So we'll see how that goes. We have started that circularization burn and as we come up to complete it, you'll see the fuel rapidly draining out of there. Hopefully we'll have enough to get back. We can now undock that main core module and watch the extreme lifter slowly rocket away. Ever so gently, we don't want to destroy anything at this stage. We'll come back to our extreme lifter landing attempt in just a few moments. For now though, we need to set up our moon transfer burn. Let's not forget those solar panels though, we need some solar energy to get all the way to the moon. Time warping around to our maneuver where we can start our burn. We need to start our burn a few minutes early, the thruster weight ratio on this thing is not too crash hot. Now you will have probably noticed that we have all fuel types on the central core of this thing. We have plenty of monopropellant. We have loads of fuel for ion engines if we need. We have loads of liquid fuel and oxidizer. We even have a few empty ore tanks here just in case one of the collaborators following me finds those useful in some way. Only the two outside tanks are draining their fuel while powering up here. As I said before, the idea is to get the entire fully fueled core here up and docked. So there we go, our moon transfer burn is complete. We'll time warp in here now. There we go, so we'll select the collaboration station as our target and we'll just prepare here to do our retrograde burn so that we can fall into a moon orbit. Time warping in to do that burn, it is around a two minute burn, so one minute either side of our maneuver node. Of course all of this footage is very heavily sped up so that you don't need to sit through these very monotonous burns. Um, it's a massive vessel, so it really does take a long time to slow this thing down. Also a slight inclination change here to match our target, we were out by about one degree there. Of course you're much better off doing your inclination changes where your velocity is the lowest possible, so that's why we're doing it here. So what we'll do now is do another retrograde burn at our periapsis just until we get our orange intersect markers winding right down and matching up perfectly. Then of course we can essentially come in and meet up with our target. 
coming right down will intersect as these orange markers line up here at intersect 1. And there we go, a separation of only 1.7 kilometers. Time warping in. So Matt Kerman is approaching us at just under 100 meters per second, so we are using our target retrograde marker and we are burning to wipe off that relative velocity. And I have overshot this quite badly actually because this thing just wipes off its velocity so very, very slowly. It is fairly difficult to get the accuracy just perfect when you've got such a massive vessel with such a very small thrust to weight ratio. So we are now 2.9 kilometers away from the collaboration station, just doing a quick burn here towards our target to wipe off and close some of that distance. As we get as close as we're going to get, we can then turn retrograde again, wipe off that relative velocity, just until we hit that 0.0, .0 meters per second. Then we can rinse and repeat this whole process again. A smaller burn this time. As I was saying before, we have every fuel top available to us in this vessel, but also we have every size docking port. We have two senior docking ports on the back there. We have one junior in the middle. And as soon as we ditch those two side boosters, we'll have the two outside regular docking ports there as well. Now, rookie mistake, I didn't have a probe core on this thing for some silly damn reason, so I needed to launch this thing with Marcus Kerman in it. So we just needed a very small burn there to drop that lander can onto the moon's surface. We do have quite a bit of Delta V in our EVA pack alone, so this isn't a problem, we can get back. So before Marcus Kerman can have a conversation with Matt Kerman, he needs to first pass through the airlock. So he can just board the vessel there, we'll come back to him later, and we'll now start our docking process. So we're using our forward-facing senior docking port here to attach to the senior docking port on Matt Kerman's module there. Now just because of the weight of this vessel, I have 18 RCS thruster blocks attached to these two side boosters. And these are drawing monopropellant from the tanks underneath the nose cones. Coming in here nice and gently, slowly does it. And there we go, we're docked there. So the next thing we can do is ditch these side boosters. They were very, very close to being completely empty there with the amount of fuel left in them. So we're turfing these now. These are going to run back down and crash into the moon's surface. Some of you may be wondering why it is that I would ditch these things instead of just keeping them there. They could indeed be useful, but the whole aim of this collaboration series is to add a single module and probably not chew up too many parts, just so that the performance isn't going to be too bad for those later on in the series. So there we go, we have attached a massive module with a load of fuel for anyone to use at this point on. Back to the extreme lifter now, we're going to attempt to land this thing. A small retrograde burn here just to bring our periapsis down far enough so that it looks to be falling into the ocean just past the Kerbal Space Center. We are using our air brakes here. These are going to allow us to drop a lot of velocity quite quickly as we pass into the lower atmosphere. But of course we are using our engines to reduce a lot of our velocity here as well to make our controlled descent. We're going to switch the engines on and off as the needs arise. We don't have a lot of fuel to waste here so uh, we can't burn them for very long. Just getting a little heat there, we can pop those air brakes in and out if they're starting to overheat. Oh, we don't have a lot of fuel left, I can't use any more. It looks like we're actually going to overshoot this. All of our parachutes out. Come on, come on, I don't want to end up in the ocean. Oh god, this is not going to work. Ah, oh, the drogue chutes are out, they might help slow us enough. Actually, we might be okay here. Might be okay, hopefully we've got enough fuel to touch down. Just need to wipe off a little tiny bit of velocity, this is too fast to land. And... touchdown! <laughs> Uh, we were very lucky there not to land in the ocean. We were only a hundred meters or so away from it, so yeah. So the collaboration station is here orbiting the moon nicely there now. Meanwhile, Marcus Kerman, who is still in the airlock, has had the pressure equalized and the inner airlock doors have finally been opened. Marcus, of course, very happy to finally catch up with Matt Kerman in person rather than over the radio. 
Hey, hey, how you going, Matt? How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. I've been wondering when the hell you'd show up. We don't have much space up here. I've actually been practicing my violin solo to pass the time away. Do you, uh, want to hear it? Well, yeah, that'd be great. Wow, that's, uh, that's excellent. Um, Colab Station to Mark Kerman. Any chance you can deliver that HAB module? I need more space. Yeah, sure, uh, roger that. I'll, uh, see what I can do. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This one is even better. Hey, Mark, would you put a rush on that one, please? What the hell is that god-awful noise? 